Hi, I'm Chloe. And I'm Lucy. And we run the blog Paleo Britain. Uh, last week we um, posted a video about the new Eat Well guide that's just been issued um, by the government. And today we want to talk about one of the members that were involved in putting together these new guidelines, which is the British Nutrition Foundation. And we just want to talk about their conflicts of interest. So we looked on the British Nutrition Foundation website and they state on there that they are there to provide evidence-based scientific insight and information and they do not endorse any products or engage in food advertising campaigns. Um, but we looked on their website and uh, they have a list of their members that um, basically provide financial support to the foundation and the members include a whole list of processed food companies so I'll just name a few British Sugar, Heinz, Warburton's, Unilever, Mars, Nestle, Weetabix, Coca-Cola and PepsiCo um, so a huge list of processed food companies and you have to ask yourself what are these companies doing supporting a nutrition foundation they're not doing it because they have a genuine interest in us being provided with healthy eating advice they're doing it because they have a vested interest in their products being part of an acceptable diet yeah um, and the British Nutrition Foundation say that they are you know they're, they're there to educate consumers but you know, they say on their meal plan, they have a meal plan that's available, and it says on there that, you know, one thing that you could be drinking is a carbonated drink, which that shouldn't be on the meal plan at all. And it's funny that one of their members is Coca-Cola and PepsiCo. They obviously have conflicting interests there, and it's just not really good enough for a nutritional body to be putting that sort of information out. Um, on the meal plan as well, they have things like baked beans, so Heinz, they have fortified wheat biscuits, which is Weetabix, um, and they have all sorts of biscuits and snacks on there, which really shouldn't be on there. And one of um, another of their members is Mondelez, who also you know create all different snacks. Um, they have Cadbury's, Roses, all those sorts of things. So, um, and. If I just read to you from their weekly meal plan what their snack suggestions are, they've got two chocolate digestive biscuits, a small chocolate mousse, 30 grams of plain crisps, plain scone with low fat spread or a flapjack slice as suggestions of healthy snacks. Obviously, why are they not saying things like a piece of fruit, um, some plain unsalted nuts or some unsweetened coconut flakes? I mean, two chocolate digestive biscuits is not a good idea for a snack and that shouldn't be on a you know, a model healthy eating guide. No, exactly not. And, you know, those things aren't nutrient dense and they're not going to be good for the nation, so they shouldn't be advertising it on their plan. Um, so one of the other things that they've got is wheat in almost every meal. So if you look at their meal plan, it's two fortified wheat biscuits for breakfast, a wholemeal wrap for lunch and a plain scone for a snack, or two slices of wholemeal toast, thin crust margarita pizza and whole wheat spaghetti for your dinner. So wheat three times a day. Um, also, the, the, the options they're choosing are still processed foods because two slices of wholemeal toast is actually still a processed food. Um, we just don't think that with these conflicts of interest that the British Nutrition Foundation really should be giving anyone nutrition advice and they certainly shouldn't be making up the government's um, panel that are putting together the official government advice which is the Eat Well Guide. I know, making the bold claim that they don't endorse any of the, these products when quite clearly they do. Thanks for listening. Thank you.